giving you a voice, making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archived FIRST Robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And by viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Hello everyone and welcome to We the North Recap. Today we'll be talking about smart scouting, recap the events that happened this past week, and give some previews for next week. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Dan. I'm Chris. I'm Lenny. And I'm Praneet. Now before we move on to a discussion topic, we will be giving away some fun logo mugs on this show thanks to FTC Team Redfish Robotics. Let's bring on producer Tyler to talk more about what it is and how you can win. You know, I totally forgot to ask you guys, by the way, for a keyword. So real quick, while I describe this, I wanted you to uh, blare out a keyword once I'm done. So, uh, and we'll use that for the giveaway. But uh, friends at Redfish Robotics, if you've been watching the region recap shows, are giving away uh, one live on each one of our region recap shows for Canada and uh, the United States. Uh, so uh, once again, we'll do the keyword for that. Uh, Chris has put into our chat that it's going to be yeah. hashtag derp. No, chipping corn. <laughs> ha hashtag I'm derp dead. it is. Well, you well, said wait. it should have been corn. You should have re said something. Should have put in corn you said quicker. shout it out. Okay, I mean, Chris typed it. That's fair. But we'll, do, we'll do a hashtag derp, I we guess. We just didn't want to interrupt you, I guess. Right. Yeah. No, but that's that's true. That's the polite Canadian way of doing things, right? So, uh, uh, yes, sir. <laughs> well, Canadian. Well, in Midwest, we're all from the north, right? So it's, you know, we're all polite up here. Uh, so once that's again, true. if you're interested, type in hashtag derp. That's what you need to win. Uh, and uh, don't forget to make sure you click the follow button. Subscribers get five times luck. Other than that, uh, good luck. I'm winning. Enjoy the show. All right. Thank you, Tyler. All right. Talk about smart scouting. Um, you know, year after year, people talk about, hey, you know, we got to scout. We got to write down what the robots do. We got to we got to write down what they can score, what they can't score, if, whatever they're good at and bad at. But like, I think at the end of the day, do you think people get too caught up in the numbers? Do they? Do you think they get too caught up in the quantitative that they forget to look at the qualitative stuff? What do you guys think? No, absolutely. Let me. I'll jump in here first, fellas. But um, <clears throat> one of the big things that we do at Ten Eighteen is, I after every event, we do a, a deep dive analysis of each team. We make sure that we look at for for trends, where they like going, what's their favorite spot to uh, pick. Like for example, a favorite loading station, um, favorite driver station, um, what type of trips they like taking. Um, just be able to tell if we can disrupt things like that. Also, we we look at things like drive like drivetrain or how they actually manipulate the piece. Um, for example, I know for uh, for limbs, we knew that defense was going to be a big thing. And uh, if you have like mechanums or omnis, even though we have omnis, we knew that it was gonna you're probably gonna see uh, half of the numbers that you saw. So can you still win with half of the numbers that the team's putting up or stuff like that? Yeah, right. That's that's fair. What, what do you think? What do you think, Dan? Okay, so qualitative scouting is huge, and especially in a game like this where defense is going to happen and eliminations, qualifications, will, you know, it might, it might not, you never know, but in eliminations, you're going to see some defense, and I've seen it time and time again where robots, you know, even the first seed are just doing amazing, knocking everything out, scoring rockets left and right, but then when eliminations come in, they just get shut down by a defense robot. And so it's hard to see it's hard to look at a robot and, and know how they'll fare against defense unless they actually play against it but there are some indicators just looking at other looking at how they fare when maybe their alliance partner gets in their way uh what happens how they're able to react what their drivetrain is like is another good uh thing to look at uh swerve drives uh if they have a swerve drive how do they drive it are they able to you know juke left and right spin to win things like that just to get around defense there's a lot to it right and and something else that people forget that uh, is that you don't you don't always have to look for hey why did this team only score like five game pieces this match versus like twelve in the other um, that's where your qualitative stuff comes in like you ask your student who's scouting be like just write down a single blurb be like their intake broke or 
they spend too much time picking up the disc from the human loading station, or you write down this robot was defending them, and that kind of gives you perspective on what's going on, and then you look out for those things in the future matches. Does that, yeah. that kind of make sense? Yeah. Yeah. DPR is also sense. pretty good this this year. Look at DPR in order to see like what if anyone's doing something crazy to do, disrupt another team or disrupt all the teams really. Yeah, that's fair. I think I think this is one of those years because they're able to better track. Um, better track what robot is climbing what. Uh, even this year's OPR is surprisingly accurate for, yeah. on, on the Blue Lions, and it's not just like a CCWM, so it's pretty good. Um, question. I think, I think there's, gotta, a, gotta, there's a question oh, in the shit. chat. Someone says, uh, oh my god, robots too. Lenny, how do you scout for things like driver stations with a small sample size? Um, a lot of the stuff that we do, uh, we look back at match videos. Not only do we do at the event, but at, since we're in districts, we have the uh, the fortune, pretty fortunate to be able to look at a team from an event before, and we're going to face them again. We know that already, so we'll be able to see like how they interact and how they drive, and also just kind of see like against the little trends. Um, if they are slower from the farther or from the center, you can tell relatively quickly, especially with match video. This is the future of scouting. Where match scouting. videos are being uploaded <laughs> consistently, it's amazing time. However, the times the when they upload match videos are like changing frames every, you know, few seconds. So all of a sudden you're like looking at the red alliance, and then there's like the blue lines only, so you can't see what's happening. Frustrating right, right there. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. All right. That's never uh, trust that's pretty the good rankings. Topic. Never trust, never the, trust rankings. the rankings. Always <laughs> trust trust the numbers because numbers don't lie. Do your own numbers. Do yeah. your own numbers, for sure. All right, so moving on, let's talk about the Central Illinois Regional. It's probably the closest thing that Illinois will have to a district anytime soon, at least, hopefully, May or not hopefully. Uh, it's a historically small event with many teams using it as their home regional, one could say. 41-43 uh, Mars Wars and 1756 Argos were neck and neck throughout qualifications, competing for the first seed and the ability to pick 2481 Roboteers, who have won the event the past four years. In the end, by one ranking point, Argos pulls out ahead and picks Roboteers, as well as 1781 Lindblum, Lindblum? Electric Eagles. Mars Wars did their scouting, however, and picked up 4256 Cyborg Cats, as well as 5442 Mechanical Monarchy. There was an upset by the fifth and third seed, but at the end, it came down to just the first versus the second alliance in the finals. The first seed was just too strong, however, and managed to win in two matches. And I'd say a lot of their strength of their alliance came from its... They were able to change up their strategies and adapt to defense incredibly well every match. And also, congrats to 5847 Ironclad for winning chairmans. And now before me, as a short interview with 1756 Argos just after winning. Tyler? the Central Illinois Regional. I'm here now with the regional champion, 1756 Argos. I'm here with Noah, who's the captain of the number one alliance. Noah, you guys had a really interesting final. Your robot had a little bit of issues with the arm going on, a lot of switching going on. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so that first finals match, our arm decided to disable, so we just went down and played defense, and then we ended up playing the audible in the second match to go and play defense just because how we're shutting the other defense down, be able to switch from both sides of the defense on the other alliance. So tell me, you know, you guys played a lot of the Roboteers, but I want to hear about the other robot in your alliance, too. I mean, those guys, when you broke down, they just swapped, and it looked like that was all part of the plan. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, they were great at switching with us whenever we needed it. Um, just being able to, they flew super smoothly with us, switched off so we could go play defense, and they could keep scoring for us. And how about the Roboteers in your alliance? You guys have played a lot with them. Tell me about your relationship and kind of what makes that so special. Um, there was always great to work with, always great teammates, always willing to try new things. Like, we were going to try to get the double climb today sadly didn't get it but it was something to work on in the future for sure well, you got a big win though for sure and that's really what counts so congratulations thank to you. you and uh we'll see you at the world championships later on thank you thanks a lot so something real quick before we get back to you guys i, want, I just want to mention we're going to talk about this more in the frc top 25 tomorrow but something interesting the central Illinois regional ran uh, not just frc but on the exact same field here as well too they also ran ftc and fll and on Saturday, we're running an FRC match, and they would break and either run either a FLL or FTC match. So they'd do FRC, then FTC, then FRC, then FLL. 
kind of keep going there. And I thought that was really cool because uh, now you didn't have awkward pauses and awkward dances for about three hours on Saturday morning. So just a cool, <laughs> cool, cool note. We'll be talking about that more on the FRC Top 25 tomorrow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, right. for sure. FTC and FLO should always get some love. All right. Moving on from one corn rich state to another, though, the Iowa Regional hosted a diverse group of 48 teams. Team 933 McGuanago Bears played well throughout both days and was able to get the title of first seed. They picked up 525 Swart Dogs, which is a historically good team, and this year was no different. And lastly, grabbing 2976 Knights. That's a interesting. Knights. Anyway, um, so they had no problems getting into the finals, and they were getting 80 to 90 points every, you know, every elimination match. It was very impressive. You looked like they were going to take it, but the third seed had something to say about that. The third seed had 50-13, Trobots, 967, the Iron Lions, and 64-55, the Coded Collective. They managed to upset the second seed, led by Team Neutri- Neutrinos, 39-28. And I think the secret to the third seed doing so well was just their consistency. Each match, uh, their consistency each match. Either way, the first seed did put up a good fight, but the third seed managed to win out by getting ahead in Sandstorm, as well getting uh, a Hab 2 climb at the end. Those Hab 2 climbs changed the outcome of the match and shout out to them as well as 525 Swart Dogs for getting a silver gold qu- cling bling with their chairman. Bling bling. Cling bling. Bling bling. Yes. All right, Chris, bring it over to Greater Pittsburgh. Yes. The Greater Pittsburgh Regional. Of all the funds, uh, there were 45 teams came out to battle it out there um, with a crazy upset with the eighth seed taking down the first seed in the quarterfinals. Um, so that upset, unfortunately, wasn't enough quite Wait to get them to carry them to finals. Uh, they made it to the semifinals, but no further than that. Um, in the finals, it was the second seed, 48, 33, 24, 58, 42, versus the fourth seed, 35, 04, 41, 50, and 17, 87. In the final match of that that regional, um, fourth fourth alliance was really needing to get that uh, get the win to take it to a third match. They'd lost their first one. Um, unfortunately, right out of the gate, they're down a bot right up the start of the match. So uh, that was very unfortunate for them. They weren't able to pull it around. Um, Percy was able to just walk walk through that match pretty easily and uh, take take their win. Um, big big shout-out to Team 5811 Bonds on their chairman's win and 5740 the Trojanators on their engineering inspiration. Yeah, congrats. Now going down to uh, the great state of Indiana, um, the second event of the great state of Indiana – and the story was who's going to rank first. Was it A68 or 1747? But at the end of the event, the talk was the rookies, uh, 7457, Super Duper Robotics. Um, I want to give you some some quick off-the-cuff info about the event. Um, first off, shout-out Indiana first for hosting a great event. Um, but just the story out of this event was that, you know, um, defense wins championships. If you look at the number three seed alliance that actually won it, first off, because they ended up a rookie, their first event ever, they went to. They were not only were seeded number three, they also took home the rookie all star and the highest rookie seed. So they took three awards home. I've never seen that happen. I was super, just super laid for them. Um, but for me, the talk, the talk was defense wins championships. Huge, huge shout out to 90, uh, 34, 94 of the quadrangles, just playing some killer shutdown D. Uh, they did it to us. I mean, it, it hurt, but I mean, they, they definitely showed that they were a very good value pick um, the third time around. And uh, the rookies really did their scouting, man. They did their job, um, and I'm super proud of them. After this is all said and done, after our show, we'll actually have an interview that I conducted with the third seed ranked uh, um, rookies and kind of talk more about their story there. Um, some more shout outs the winners of the event 3494, um, 7457, and uh, 4272. Uh, also, shout out 461, 20 years, and another chairman's super well deserved. And the uh, EI award went to 1747 uh, HBR. Congrats, everyone, for a great event. And now to the next one. I have a quick shout out, real quick, to uh, uh, Scott Miller, the game announcer, for finally making it on video of one of the Indiana <laughs> uh, district recap videos. So, congrats, Scott. Ooh. Shout out, uh, Scott. Long time coming for him. All right, moving up to the great white north from the great state of Indiana. Thank you, Lenny. At the York University district event in Ontario, um, no one knew what to expect. This was the second year. And historically strong teams are yet to compete. There are plenty of every bots to show consistency is key. And there was only two level three climbers in attendance in 1075, the Sprockets and the Super Rookies 7558 Alt F4, their beautiful black powder coated machine. 
Uh, heading into Alliance selections, it was the every bot, out of all things, of Team 6140, the SMT Titans, leading the way with Team 854, the Iron Bears. They also got a steal of a defense pick in Team 6141, O'Connor Robotics, uh, as the 24th robot. Fighting their way through close quarters, haha, <laughs> pun intended, and then even closer semifinals matches, where they lost semis match two by one point, and then won the rubber match by one point. They made their way to the finals to face the third seed of teams 907 East York Cybernetics, Team 1360 Orbit Robotics, and Team 6975 the Neil McNeil Maroonotics. That's a fantastic name. In the finals, the first seed showed that they knew how to perform. Taking it in a straight up 2 0 sweep, it was back to back wins at York for the first seed alliance. And it was the first ever event win for Team 854. Um, shout out to John Haydock. He's a super. Super, super cool, super, super cool guy. Whoa, I'm going to say dude and guy and I mix it all up. Um, and huge congrats to Team 4343, Max Tech, for winning their first ever EI, as well as Team 1360 for their repeat chairman's award. So that gets them the silver gold cling bling at this event. Cling bling! Cling bling. Oh, man. I forgot. Everyone has to do a little shout at the back for that. And now I'm going to make my way down the super busy 401 for the deep dive special. I'm going to go ahead and call this the week four flagship event for We the North for University of Waterloo district event. Uh, some of the biggest names in Ontario, if not first, were debuting their, um, their machines at this event, including 2056 OP Robotics, 1241 Theory 6, 4678, the Cyber Cavs, 4917, um, Elmira. Oh, man. Woo. Um, for many that don't know, this event has given us at least one Einstein robot every year since 2010. Thanks, Karthik, for that, you know, pro tip. Uh, so you know this event is going to be absolutely bonkers. And this was the first event for 30 of the 32 teams attending. And the only two exceptions were your Humber, Humber District winners in 3683 Team Dave and Team 7664's uh, Big Cell Tech 6. Leading the way... In very, very usual ways, Team 2056 skyrocketed to the top of the standings and the platform and remained there for throughout the weekend. There were many level three climbs at this event in 4678, 4976, the Rebels, 4069 in Low Ellen, 4917, and 4920 in Bell River Automatons. And it kept the standings rather volatile, running through the gauntlet of the qualifying matches, including facing 1241 twice in the last four matches and once with OP Robotics. Like, it was like 1241 and 2056 versus Team Dave. Um, Team Dave stole the second seed from Theory with their super consistent and reliable play. And that, that exact thing is what caught 2056's eye and convinced them to pick Dave after, you know, picking Theory after mat, event after event. And after facing them in playoffs year after year, basically from... 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, to now playing with them in playoffs for the first time. Um, and they swooped up a fantastic alliance partner in Team 5672, First Nation STEM, who played some amazing positional defense throughout the weekend, and they did just that in the playoffs. The first alliance was formidable with a double hab start and a three-hatch auto on the cargo ship between two robots. They were setting opponents well behind in the first 15 seconds each match, and they meshed well quickly and set the highest score and match the highest score at the event in quarters match two of 106 and uh, plowing their way through the semifinals, scoring the highest score, including penalties, 139. They made it to the finals to face some very familiar faces in the second alliance of team 1241, 4678, and rookies, rookies, 7800, the electric comics. It was some of the best deep space to be played so far between the two alliances, uh, playing mind games of starting positions and swapping scoring strategies throughout the match. But in the end, it was the first alliance that came through on top, starting 2056 seasons, 2056's season with just another blue banner, doubling up Dave's banner count this season, and earning Team 5672 their very first blue banner. And later on that evening... Team 5672 went on to win the Chairman's Award for that gold, gold cling bling. And, bling. One of their and one of their students won the Dean's List Award at that event. So it was a super successful event for the First Nation STEM team. And congratulations to Team 772 Saberbites for winning the Engineering Inspiration Award. That brings us into the top 10 for this week. All right. 
Uh, quick top 10. So we have um, started from number 10, team 525, 4143, 48, 930, 1756, 3324, 2481, 3683, 1241, and the number one, 2056, OP Robotics. Canada bias, baby. Ooh. What's up? Bro, come on. We got to get there. Midwesterners. We got to <laughs> beat these you gotta Canadians. You gotta, Go out to the polls and vote. We got to Pokemon to the polls. Go to the poll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think I think right. I think we'll take we'll take an alliance of the top three of these Canadian teams <laughs> against any three any day. Yeah. All right. Well, let's let's course. take a quick look at next week. Uh, I will be at North Star, but there will be also sixty other teams competing. There are fifty six teams from Minnesota, one team from Wisconsin, one team from Turkey, and two teams from China. There is also four rookie teams competing there. It's going to be a crazy awesome event. And right across the street. At the Minnesota 10,000 Lakes Regional, presented by the Medtronic Foundation. Oh, it's too long of a name. Uh, with 63 names, 63 teams competing there. Um, all but one team from Minnesota is going to be there, and they're coming all the way from the Czech Republic just to compete. Um, should be should be hopefully great weather compared to the other Minnesota regional uh, regional events. So, uh, looking forward to that. All right, and quickly come back to Indiana. It's going to be the last district event of the state. It's going to be a barn burn. I can't wait. Um, we're going to have 234, 1501, 1747, 868, 829. And, of course, the uh, the Darlings, 7457, Super Duper Robotics going to be there as well. Um, if you have a, if you have something you want to watch, definitely watch that one. Super Duper Rookies. Super Duper. All right. And then we're moving on to the Wisconsin Regional, which will be featuring a collective of teams from all over. Uh, some guys to look out for are 930, 930 McWanago Bears. I'm going to have to keep saying that name again. Uh, 16. Yeah, the, the, I'm going to have to say it three times now in three separate weeks. All right, 1675 <laughs> UPS, 1710 Ravonics Revolution, 1732 Hilltoppers, and many, many more. Also, shout out to Team 233 Pink Team for coming all the way up from Florida to compete, and probably my favorite ever team name, 7498 Wingus and Dingus, coming from New Zealand. <laughs> I love that name so I'm much. Dead. Wingus Dingus. I want a team shirt from them, please. All right, then we'll hey. just... Uh, no, I guess I'll just do a quick cover for the two Ontario district events. Uh, the first one taking place in North Bay next weekend, where we'll see the second showing of Team 610 Crescent Robotics with their beautiful arm machine, 1305 Ice Cubed as local heroes there, and Team 1310 making their way up Highway 11. And on the other side of the province, we have the Windsor Essex Great Lakes event, where we'll see this basically the second showings for lots of big name teams including 1114 warp 7 865 uh, 1285 big bang and uh, all these teams are going to be looking to put on a big show before the provincial championships two weeks from now and now before wrapping up we have to draw a winner for the fun logo mug in giveaway thanks again to redfish robotics for the giveaway tyler who's our lucky winner Ooh. all right the winner for the uh, giveaway once again this awesome mug is going to be the winner. <laughs> uh, Joker thirty four. Congratulations! Did Joker win last week? I don't remember. Joker thirty four. Did he? I thought Joker won. Rigged? Nope. Did, nope. Didn't win the so. one from last week. So, uh, so Joker thirty four. Congratulations! Yes, that is a rigged drawing because uh, the subscriber <laughs> won. So that is definitely <laughs> rigged. Lots of rigged emotes and chats. Uh, everybody. By the way, just a side note, Dan, I can't believe that you uh, pronounced McGuanago correctly multiple times, but keep calling them nine thirty three. I'm like. It's 9.30, yeah. <laughs> but then you Did say McGuanago correctly, so that's funny. Dude. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm sorry, McGuanago. I took so much time to per perfect your name. All right. Beautiful. Uh, All right. Sorry, so, Chris. Th thank you to everyone who has watched. If you want more First Robotics in your life and like what we do, all that we ask is that you let others know about this show and that this is the place you go to for more FRC in your life. If you got a few bucks to share, we appreciate it. But if not, we totally understand, and we're just delighted to have you on board. On behalf of myself, Lenny, Chris... Pranit and our producer Tyler, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. Our next show is Best of the West and talk to you next week on We the North Recap and also check out the Behind the Bumpers video coming up from Lenny. Peace. Peace. Guys. Goodbye. Bye. We need your help to keep fun loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.